from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi everybody, welcome to our show, Tipsy Tuesday. Whether you're watching us from Facebook or YouTube, I'm here with my trusty sidekick, Mr. Honey Producer. Hey now. How's everybody doing? So make sure you tell us your name and where you're tuning in from at the start of the show. Say hi to all your friends, new friends. If you're new around here, make sure you follow our page and subscribe to our channel. And then you won't miss a beat. Uh, and we love it if you share some thumbs up and hearts throughout the show. It just shows us that you like what we're doing and we're going to keep it up. We're going to keep it up. We promise. Uh, of course, we have a giveaway at the end of the show. Two winners every single show. One is chosen randomly from your comments. Whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, the more you comment, the better your chances. No need to buy a lottery ticket. And then we always have a question at the end, so make sure to watch us all the way through. You'll get a chance to answer the giveaway question, even if you're not watching us live. We appreciate you being here. On tonight's show, we will talk about our very successful quilt along the Hey June quilt along that took place on Saturday. I've got a, um, also, I'm gonna talk about a little something about our showroom. And we're changing things up at the warehouse a little bit. We have also big thing, big thing, a special guest today that is going to give you all kinds of ideas on how to quilt your June quilt. I know that might not be fully finished, but it's never too early to start thinking about a quilting plan especially if you want to do it yourself. So sometimes those ideas need to just marinate for a little bit. So I have a special guest. Her name is Nina. I'll introduce you to her a little bit later in the show. But as always, we start off with announcing our winner from our last week's show. On our last week's show, I just asked you very simply, what size will your June quilt be? And our winner is Shirley Swanson. Congratulations, Shirley. She was going to be making a full-size quilt. Congrats, Shirley. Um, I wonder how far along you are with that full-size quilt. I know it's been just a couple of days, but um, so no pressure, no pressure. I know it's going to take some time. So the quilt along, thank you all so much for all of your comments. I had to have a little bit of a meltdown on Sunday. <laughs> You know, sometimes things just get too overwhelming when, after, when your body and your mind and your soul is just drained. And so I was happy I reached out, you know, because sometimes when you need some love, you just got to reach out and get it. And I got it in by the, I don't know what, by the thousands. It was amazing. So thank you all so much for all of your messages, emails, direct messages. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, thank and you all. comments. It was overwhelming and amazing. So. Guess what? We're not going anywhere, <laughs> are we? No. <laughs> We're no. not going anywhere. We're going to keep going, keep she going. She had a moment, everybody. She had a moment. It just, you know, it happens. It happens. It was a lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of days, long nights, and not a lot of sleep. So that happens. You sometimes hit a brick wall, and I did. And you know what? It only lasted for a little bit, and then all of your words just took me right out of that sp space, which is good. But I, you know, usually I'm really good at shutting off and letting things go. I'm kind of a master at it, of just letting it roll off my back. But sometimes when there's compounding things, and if you're not in a good mental headspace or, <laughs> or tired, it just, it just doesn't work, and it just sits with you. So it's a good lesson, too, I think is that really choosing our words in print, because when we're emailing, texting, and writing um, stuff, you don't hear somebody's tone of voice, you, and it all depends on the person reading it and on that person's headspace. So it just kind of teaches all of us, taught me to, to really um, be respectful and be careful when you're you know, writing, answering emails, and anything, because you, know, you never know where that other person is coming from. So. Again, we're just going to be kind all the time. That Yay. just helps. Uh, and, you know, Mr. HP shirt said it the whole day. <laughs> it was kind of a, be kind. a predictor. Yeah. It was good. Um, but, yes, we, we um, went and played some pickleball on <laughs> Sunday, and he didn't let me beat him. 
You were pretty mean to me at first. I was mean, yeah. Oh. I was in a bad space. <laughs> we, well, I wouldn't. I wasn't mean. I was just like really um, snappy. Snappy, yeah. <laughs> But then, you know, okay. getting your endorphins going it put me in a happy place. And I finished the night off with a really nice cocktail and dinner. So that was all good. I woke up beautiful. very refreshed, went to bed early, and it was great. Anyways, if you missed our quilt along, of course, the videos are always going to be available for you. The blog has been updated with links to all of the videos. So if you have trouble finding them, just go to the blog. I like always said when we have an event, there's one blog post with everything, links to everything. The videos are already on there. And um, also, the pattern is available. Of course, I told you we were only going to give everybody's, all of our favorite people access to it free for 24 hours, but it's still available for purchase. If anybody asks you, it's not like they missed a thing, it's still available. So um, if you missed the actual sew along, or the quilt along Saturday, I talked about some stats right when we started. And I thought it would be interesting for you guys that weren't there to hear how many were with us and from how many countries. So we had almost 10,000 people get the pattern. So how many did actually sew? We, of course, never know. But... 30 uh was 34 different countries that got the pattern and this was based on saturday morning i know there's lots more people that have gotten the pattern since then and i haven't checked the stats since but we had um uh, people from like i said 35 different countries and let's just read them because i really want to appreciate every single one of you from all over the world so i'm just going to read them again <laughs> it is australia austria belgium brazil Canada, Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hong Kong, Hungary, Iceland, India, Ireland, Jersey, Malaysia, Mexico, Netherlands. We have New Zealand, Nigeria, and Norway, Poland, Slovakia, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Thailand, Tonga. We got the UK, including both England and Scotland, and the US of A. Uh, of course, within Canada, we had people represented from 12 different provinces and territories and people from all 50 states, plus D.C. and Puerto Rico. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And last but not least, we had a few uh, folks from the Armed Forces Europe, which get categorized in their own little country. So uh, thank you again so much. We really, really appreciate all your support, and it's just kind of amazing that we got everybody going. Now, we had about, during the live sessions, we had about 4,000 on average watching every single of the five lives throughout the day. 4,000 folks, and that was both on Facebook and YouTube, so I think that's pretty phenomenal. Um, we don't even count the ones that have watched later because that is um, mul you know, multiplying that number by, by a lot. So we will be doing a little bit of a June slideshow next week. So if you're one of the quick ones and get your um, blocks together, make sure you post a photo in Gudrun's Quilt Crew on Facebook. Or if you're not on Facebook, you can always email it to me. Gudrun is at GE Quilt Designs, and we'll include it in the slideshow. Just make sure it has to arrive the day before. <laughs> I cannot do it day of. Um, and then we will do another slideshow late July, early August. So we'll give you the month. I know it's summer, it's busy, so we'll give you the month and um, we'll do another slideshow because, you know, with previous quilt alongs, we've had to do multiple slideshows. We've had so many quilts being posted, so that's a beautiful thing. So make sure you get them, get them posted, take a photo, um, and always, if you have it any, at any, in any way possible, take your quilt or quilt top outside for a photo for the best possible colors. Take a photo without direct sunlight, like find a shady spot or a cloudy day, that's the best chance to take it, and don't use flash, okay? All right, so um, I wanted to just quickly talk a little bit about something. We did a bit of a facelift in our showroom today, um, as we are now very excited about offering showroom shopping reservations. Yes, so you don't have to 
place on order first for, first for pickup, um, you can just make your reservation on the website up to three months in advance. So if you know you're coming down, um, you can just book it. So let me show you where you get to that on the website. So you just go into the main menu, um, shop menu, and right there at the bottom right corner, it says showroom shopping. And that brings you up to this page. And on this page, you can choose where that red arrow is pointing to. You can choose to bring anyone with you. So, you, so we have time slots, and we can't take many, you know, endless people at the same time because we're, you know, it's a small area. We have, um, we have to work the computer with it, and we don't want people waiting too long. So, but you can take up to four guests with you uh, in each time slot, which are half-hour time slots. Um, and then... Once you click that continue button, this will come up. You can pick your days, and the available time slots for that day will come up. So we have now extended our, our, pick, our showroom hours just a little bit. So it's still going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays, but now it's going to be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then we have added Fridays from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. So connecting into the weekend a little bit. We are, of course, closed on the weekends, unfortunately, but I think this is exciting. Is anybody excited about this? It's exciting. Yeah, so if you're local, if you're in town for something, planning a road trip, make sure you stop on by. Now, I won't promise I'll always be there. Sometimes I have meetings and things, but you know what? You never know. Sometimes you might run, to, run into us um, or Kobe. Kobe is our doorbell, too, so <laughs> you might see Kobe. All right, any questions so far? Is everybody ready to move into our topic? That's great. All right, um, all right, so I'm very excited to introduce you to my guest of the evening. Um, her name is Nina Klotfelter, and I met Nina... Uh, Two or three years ago, three years ago, three years ago, she's giving me little hints. <laughs> three years ago, we were teaching together in Louisiana uh, for like a four day conference, and we had a blast hung, hanging out between classes for lunches and after. And um, beautiful. So she specializes in teaching uh, free motion quilting and quilting with rulers on your domestic machines. And so I saw her, she was going to participate in the June quilt along, and I said, hey, <laughs> this will be great. Have you decided how are you going to quilt it? And so I reached out, and she had all these ideas. So I want to happily introduce Miss Nina. Hi. Hey, I gotta put my headphones how are so you? I can hear you. There we go. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Gudrun? I'm great. Now, you got to tell everybody where you're from and everything. I am from, well, I live in Mobile, Alabama. Do you want yes. to know where I live or where I'm from? Where are you from, though? <laughs> I'm originally from Marstown, New Jersey. Um, Jersey girl living up, in Alabama. Yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> high school years in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm in Mobile, Alabama. I've been here for almost 40 years. So. Oh, okay, so you this is, are. This is home at this point. You're a Southern girl now. You're a Southern girl now. I'm a transplant. That's right. Yes, yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> Well, I am excited to see what you came up with for this. Now, tell us a little bit. You've been teaching this for how long, you know, just based, focused on, on um, free motion quilt or quilting on your domestic. I, I, I've, I've been teaching on domestic for mm -hmm. 18 years. Um, it's come a long way. Um, had a six-year break in the middle of that. I was a caretaker for my dad. And the last four years, I've just been getting back into it. So it's, as you know, Gudrun, mm -hmm. sharing your passion is just such great joy. Yeah. And I, I love free story. motion quilting. That's my favorite part of the whole quilting process. So it's to share it with others. And I, I totally believe that if you're willing to put the practice in, that you can get there. Oh, um, totally And agree. you can do it on your domestic. Oh. Right. As right. soon as you practice, you get better fast. Absolutely. As soon as you stop. <laughs> <laughs> it goes away a little bit. 
<laughs> but I pick it up fast again. But I, I tell you. You do. Yeah. All right. So I just want to talk about this before you, we dive into the quilting. Your, the quilt behind sure. you is your June was made with Aboriginal fabrics. Tell us a little bit about that was a little story, wasn't it? There was a little story there. A friend of mine, Heike Rusin, she is from Germany. We became friends kind of in an odd way. She made a comment on somebody's Facebook and said she's from she's living in Mobile, Alabama. Anyway, I messaged her. I'm here too. We met. We became fast friends. Um, we both bought this same Aboriginal uh, layer cake, mm -hmm. the purples, and we just thought, well, why don't we just make a fun little challenge out of this? Let's see what we can do. So I had, she's already done her top. Yeah. <laughs> so I was behind and I saw your challenge and I went, I mean, your quilt along and I went, oh, that's so perfect for the aboriginals yes. because aboriginals are, they're hard to really make work. You need the, the larger pieces to yeah. make these it's fabrics nice. really be able to shine and show up. So your your pattern was perfect for this. So awesome. thank you. Oh yeah. Thank you, it's, thank you. It's phenomenal. And the background yes. you chose is like perfect with it too. It's all aboriginal. So there's yeah. 27 different aboriginal fabrics. Wow. Everything is aboriginals. Even awesome. that black, yeah. Awesome. So I'm sure you have a plan for this, but um, I'm gonna hand it over to you because we got a lot of stuff to okay. show everybody. So you take it away, Nina. I'm gonna. I do. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go a little fast. So you guys are going to put the slides up? Yep. The pictures? HP is on okay. it. Just tell, I did them in order as you, um, you know, they're, they're image zero through, what is it, 18 or something? So tell them if you okay, want that's, something different. That's I do that's want something 16, different. Honey. Yeah, that's like the very end. <laughs> we love you, Mr. HP. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so where I want to start with this is when you, when you look at your quilt after you've got it done, any quilt, you, when you look at your quilt, there are blocks that come to your head, come to your vision. In this one, in the yellow, you can see that I've, I've identified the square blocks, the, the block of four squares. And I can really focus on that and make that my free motion quilting space or next slide I can focus on the diamond shapes in this one as I have uh, designated the in the screen? yellow so she can talk what even though we have it on a full screen just so everybody can see better oh there we go do you see this Nina oh okay or we on the diamond have... shape mm -hmm. I'm sorry no we just lost your audio for a minute because we put it up, we hear, oh. we hear you now. Okay, so in this one, I would choose to focus on the diamond shape, and it's totally up to you what you want to focus on in your free motion quilting. Um, next slide. You can even get a little more detail. The other one. The next one with the little squares. So you can even get a little more detailed and focus individually on each block and do something fun in each one of those blocks and then identify each of those block those uh, plus signs in between one would be the background one would be the the opposites the light and the dark mm -hmm. so just whatever you decide to focus on and identify as with your quilting is totally up to you on any quilt that you work on so this next slide I have taken from the first spot and that is I've identified those big four square blocks. Okay, we don't have a three. You can do but, uh, do what? We don't have a three slide, but we have number four where you did the swirlies in the square. Yes, this one's okay. it. Okay. That's it. All right. So on this one so there's something else you need to consider what before you start quilting and that is two things. Is this going to be a quilt a show quilt? Do you want to quilt it densely or do you want this to be one of those cuddly quilts that you can cuddle up with and enjoy and it gets washed and used and washed and dried and used again? So if you want a show quilt you're going to have to do a lot more quilting. We'll get into that later. 
But if you want something that's cuddly and usable, this is a very easy design that you can do. And it's just the swirls and just doing one swirl in each of those quadrants and working your way around the quilt is, is simple to do on your domestic machine. Um, if you have a long arm, of course, you can do any of it. Um, so the next quilt, I mean the next slide, is one that I identified with those diamond shapes. There's a couple of different options here. Um, if you look at the top option with the curly cues and the bottom left option with the loop-de-loops, what I want you to notice is it is a diamond shape, but the seams that are in there are actually um, triangles. So I have used those triangles as my guideline. They don't have to be identified. They don't have to be stitched, but I've used those as my guides to make these curly cues and the loop-de-loops. Um, I also added one with a grid. I, I like grids. Um, grids are easy to do, especially if you do it a straight grid like this. You can actually use a walking foot. Mm -hmm. um, or you can use a ruler foot and rulers. It's totally up to you. So there is another option and that is the next slide will show you that we're not really identifying any one shape. We're just doing an all over. But, but play with me a little bit here. What I've done, let's start at the bottom right quadrant. Look at the center. There's a green circle in the center. That's my center-ish. So I get this question all the time. How do you quilt a big quilt on my domestic machine? There's a lot of fabric here and then you put batting and backing. So when you, a lot of people will tell you to roll this up. I don't recommend that. I do a little bit of a squishing mm -hmm. and I just squish it up against the machine. And if you start in the middle ish there's an ish factor here yeah. <laughs> so if you start in the middle ish and look at the bottom right quadrant i just did a stippling so what i did was started in the middle ish and meandered my way around kind of across right there over towards the right hand side of the quilt and what i'm trying to do is get i'm working towards the right and then back in so that most of my quilt is on the left hand side. You don't want all this fabric shoved up into this tiny little throat space. So when we work in the center-ish, we work in this oval-ish fashion. So you'll start in the middle-ish and you'll work around, kind of down that side, but working into the center of that quadrant, back around, and you end up back at the middle ish. Now what you can do is your needle down, make sure your needle's down, now you can turn your quilt by that one quarter. And now you're working on that same bottom quadrant, but it would be turned. Mm -hmm. and so in this case it would be where the curly cues are. And now I'm working on that quadrant, working towards towards the right hand side of the quilt, doing all these curly you would just use one design, yeah. so whichever one. I just I separated these so that you could understand the quadrants and also see other options. Yeah. But you would just be doing one design. But the curly cues, the spirals, they're fun to do. You can make them various sizes. And then you just keep, you work your way around this quadrant and you end up back in the middle-ish and you turn your quilt one more quarter and you're doing this feather quadrant up here. Um, and again, you work your way back to the middle-ish and you're doing the loop-de-loop -loop quadrant. So that is how you turn your quilt and you can quilt a large quilt in your domestic machine very successfully without rolling and it's just that squish method and turning it as you go. Um, so that is all basically uh, layout one and two. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the next slide that gets into these um, really cool layouts that had some direction to them. This one had the arrows. There was one that had the that one big X, and then 
and then the one with the big square and echoed out mm -hmm. just some fun fun things and i saw somebody online had done one that just had the rows going across Diagonal, so the same yeah. principles yeah so the same pr principles apply if you've done a layout like this you want to identify what your rows are and if you want to accent each of these rows you can do that um, the next slide shows a little bit of a sample of some options you can I, I like feathers <laughs> so um, I do like feathers now when you're drawing this is from a iPad with the eye pencil and it takes a lot of practice to get proficient in your drawing but this is all just drawing who cares right we ideas, know what we're gonna yeah. quilt it's mm -hmm. just the idea here so one of those rows oh let me let me say this the yellow is the shape Mm -hmm. The green lines, I went back in and it would be another indentation. That would be a line that was quilted in there just to identify that row. So you could do ruler work, cool. you could do a walking foot, you could do whatever you wanted to get that line in there. Um, and the yellow line, you could stitch in the ditch. That is a seam. You could stitch in the ditch or not. It's totally up to you. But there's a lot of fun things that you can really do by accenting these particular rows. Um, I did feathers, then there's just straight lines. That's the squiggly line going back and forth. And just playing with the triangles that were on there, there's, there's just so many options. So all three of these next versions are very similar. The next one has almost all, the next slide has almost all straight lines. Um, the bottom port this is two options here <laughs> that's yeah. why that green line is in the middle i was trying to get all these options in i was like oh my gosh i have so many ideas um that is amazing but you can do straight lines again you could do that with the walking foot you can do it with a ruler and your ruler foot very very achievable you can make you can squiggly the, Ooh. right <laughs> yeah you can make them squiggly they don't have to be straight um, I mean, please, ladies, know that perfection is way overrated. Absolutely. It, done, done is good. Done is best. Um, <laughs> but the sashing, I'm calling the background and the light and darks there the sashing. You could do anything in those sashings, or you can void the sashing as an individual element, like I did on the bottom. And all of this is just creating that square shape and using it as a whole. Does that make sense? And, mm -hmm. and ignoring all the little interruptions. So Absolutely. there's just, there's just <laughs> so much. Yeah. So the next slide is all on your walk with your walking foot. It's all straight lines and you can go as far as you want. Um, straight lines are very achievable and straight lines really are kind of cool because it does, it's a modern quilting but it also does not take away from the pattern design or your fabric designs. So, you know, you, you, can, you can do as much straight line quilting on here as you want. As you see, the top half and the bottom half has a little more. Um, just know the more quilting you do on these quilts, it's... It, you, you just don't want to get over quilted so that it's not as cuddly. Yeah. Um, the, I, I made the lap size and, and it's, I, my husband loves it. So he's so excited. How, when are you going to quilt this? When are you going to quilt this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it'll um, be a cuddly quilt then. So. It'll be a cuddly quilt. Yeah. It sure will. Awesome. But the next few slides, what I did was I zoomed in. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot these slides. So these are more options. Again, just, it, I thought this was a great fun layout of this, of this pattern. So you can do different um, designs in each row, or you can do them all the same. Again, the green is the straight lines, and you can do that with a walking foot. You can do that with a ruler foot. And what that does is it, it, takes a little bit of the width away from that row. 
So it, it narrows that row just a little bit, but still gives you the definition. It defines each row. So let's look at the next quilt, next slide. Mm -hmm. So these next slides are ones that I zoomed in on just those four blocks. So there's, there's all kinds of things that you can do here. These lines are not very straight, but you can make them straight. You can make them squiggly. Mm -hmm. These they're lines are, -ish. they're straight ish. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's whatever you want to make it to be, but you can use, um, seam lines and point lines on the quilt. As you look in the center, you see those, that center square that I drew in there, it actually is going on those seam intersections. Yeah. And again, this, the third square out is going on those seam intersections. And the last row out is matching on those seam intersections. So, you, you know, you can use, yeah. right, you can have a reference point or not. So if you want to just do straight lines, you can do straight lines in opposite directions. Um, the next slide shows some other options uh, for the outside, um, this loop-de-loop -loop or lace candy, whatever you want to call it, is it's just a fun design. It's easy to do and it covers a lot of space or it's something that can go very small and you can use it in sashing or borders. It can be used in all various sizes. Um, the next slide. So here I go. <laughs> We're getting a little more difficult. I love my feathers and this one worked its way out as a square spiral from the center of that square and then on the outside these are feathers that went from one triangle to the next triangle and then you would be able to um, travel onto the next set of four blocks and repeat the same thing you would do the feathers and work your way in and then you'd have to start again on the next row mm -hmm. um, so it's it's something that you can get as complicated as you want i think the next slide is gets really complicated <laughs> oh. So if you if you want to do a little bit of um, cross hatching, this is ruler work in the centers, and you can do a ruler curve, and then use that same ruler to do the cross hatching along the same curve on one side, and then on the on the other side, one is going across and one is going up and down, and it creates this beautiful cross hatching. And cross hatching looks so difficult, but it's really that's all it is is going back and forth, and you travel on that arched line as you go up to the next section, and you go across and travel up to the up on uh, up on that previously stitched line, and you go back across. So, and here you can see those um, that lattice, the lace candy mm -hmm. is use just in that sashing area. So all of these in the next slide, all of, all of what we've just talked about is me getting into technology here. <laughs> uh -oh. iPad with an eye pencil. But what I wanted to show you was these next three slides you don't have to be computer savvy. This is just a black and white printout on my printer. I chose to print it black and white, or you can print it full color. And I put them in a sleeve, I mean a page protector. You can buy them at the office supply. And that is just a dry erase marker. So I can wipe it off when I don't like it. But That's if you do idea. like it, you can also take this out and you can see that you have your design still there mm -hmm. or you can put your um you can put your piece back in yeah, and it's it's there as you want it you can have a few i'm pages. sorry you don't have to print out multiples you can have a few pages exactly you can just right so you can use this over and over and again you can put this one take it out put in another page protector and if you want this to be permanent, you would need to use a permanent marker because this will erase, as you can see right here. Mm -hmm. So it will come off. That's um, really 
but there's all kinds of ways to do this and it just gives you an idea of where you're going and what you want to do and all kinds of fun things to play with. So yeah. you can see on this square one, it's those same four blocks and that would be ruler work to create those arches and then that ribbon candy right there again to fill in a little bit and then just some straight lines to accent. What straight lines do is allow they allow the ruler work to really show up or your free motion quilting to really show up. So straight lines have a lot of different, um, very useful purposes to it. Yeah. But, this so I amazing. hope that helps. Oh, they There's, are just overflowing with ideas. This is phenomenal. When you wanted those pictures, I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many more ideas. <laughs> I know, so. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, to be a, pick your brain a little bit. But they have some questions. So first of what, how sure. do you prefer to, if you're going to quilt a, a, you know, a June quilt, the lap size on your domestic, do you spray based, pin based? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, um, if you spray based, I suggest that you use 505. Yep. Very light hand. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't put it on the back of the, top and then on the batting and then this just a very light hand mm -hmm. i don't usually use spray based for a larger quilt i usually just keep that to the the little wall hangings i will pin base this mm -hmm. i'm a pin baster um so but you can also hand baste yeah but i do have friends they spray based it all the way up to a king size so if that's what works for you do what works for you i personally don't have the space to spray baste a larger quilt yeah. And that's that's my issue with it. So, but it stays. It, it's idea. really nice. Great. Yeah. Yep. That was the question. She. Yeah. She so I like do. I pin, pin based. Now, when you when you pin based, you want your pins about a hand width apart. Yeah. Um, do you do you, when you do walking foot work? Do you do um, qu quadrants too, or do you go like way across the quilt if you can? I, I, when I'm on my domestic machine, I stay with quadrants. Okay. It, it's just, it's easier. And if you can make it work for your um, walking foot design, staying with those quadrants really makes it nice. Yeah. It really does. It's very doable. Yeah. This is great. So I'm just saying like, yeah. even if we, you, for those of us that have long arms, these are just great ideas to get your mind thinking of the different areas and shapes and um, right. That you can pull out. I yeah. love that. It, it's, it's fun to play with. And, yeah. And everybody okay. sees a different vision. Okay. Here we got a question from Patricia. Uh, how big can you okay. free motion safely on a domestic machine? Okay. Um, Patricia, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm assuming you mean how big can the design be? If I'm wrong. It's probably making, I think, how big the quilt can be. I don't know. Oh, how big can the, well, People have how big can the quilt quilts. be <laughs> is, um, it, I, the largest quilt I quilted on my domestic machine was 108 by 112. Nine inch throat space, nine inches tall. It's a California King, made it for my dad. He gave it back to me when he didn't declaw his kitten. Mm -hmm. So I now have a California King on my queen size bed, we don't fight over the covers. <laughs> oh, hey, perfect. I like that. <laughs> um, but as far as the design, I'm going to cover this as well. Mm -hmm. If you're asking how big of a design you can quilt on your domestic machine, it's, it's when you're quilting on your domestic machine, your hands are, you're not strangling your throat, your mm -hmm. ruler, I mean your foot, you're kind of a little bit away, but not too far. Yeah. So you just need to be able to stay within what you're able to move mm -hmm. within that area. Got it. Another question from so, Martha. You, Would you do yeah. outline the outlines for all the sections and then go into the section or go section by section? Oh, I'm, I'm assuming quadrant by quadrant. Right. So, um, she's asking about outlining the squares or the I diamonds. Think, like, would you go, if you're going to do like, like the, once you do the arrow design kind of, would you do the straight right. lines on all of it first and then go back? Yes. In? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, what that does, especially for a domestic machine quilter, is that stabilizes the whole quilt. You kind now, of Now all it. your pins are right. Mm -hmm. All your pins are out, and now you can you can quilt to your heart's content without getting stuck up in those pins. So, yeah, um, it happens to all of us. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you sandwich your quilt like on a design wall, on the floor, on a big table? Somebody asked that. Um, I used to go up to my church and do it in the youth, one of the youth rooms, because where are the kids during the day? They're usually at school, except mm -hmm. during COVID. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I would use one of their big rooms. But, you know, the older I get, I'm getting into the table method. So I'm, I'm getting, I have a table out and mm -hmm. doing it that way. It's just a plastic table, so you can put the pins in and feel when you're all the way through the layers and all of that. So use safety uh, so pins. I use safety pins, mm -hmm. and I use the safety pins with a little bit of a mm -hmm. curve to them. Gotta that little that. bit of a curve makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Um, another question. Do you have favorite threads or thread for free motion building? <laughs> this is... <laughs> oh, that's question. a loaded question. Yeah. I am a threadaholic. I'm an educator for Wonderfill Thread, and... Um, it, it's, I don't even know how to answer that. It's, there's just so many options with threads. I know. If you it's want like, your what's your favorite show up, fabric designer? Like, right. well, good one. where do we start? Yeah, no, it, it's, um, if you want your thread to show up, you would use a 40 or 30 weight on my Aboriginal fabrics. Whatever I do is not going to show up. So I'll probably use a 50 weight, a 60 weight, something like that, that really, it'll, it'll either be purple mm -hmm. or black, yeah. probably purple. I'm leaning towards purple, mm -hmm. but it's not going to show up. So whatever I do on this quilt is not going to show up. No. So I'm just going to have fun quilting it. And, yeah. but yeah, but if you want question. your question, I'm sure yeah. we could ask questions for two more hours, but this one, what do you use to mark the design or do you even mark anything? You just have an idea. That's a good question. Marking your quilt gives you an idea, gives your head an idea of where you're going. Um, a lot of people do like to follow a line. It's a good idea to have an idea of where you're going. If you can follow your drawing, go for it. If you're going to mark your quilt, know two things. If you use a Frixion pen that removes by heat, oh. <laughs> it leaves, yeah, it leaves a white line residue. And even uh, on, on all of this, it would leave a white line residue. Even if it disappears completely, it comes back in the cold. Right, Gudrun? In the winter, mm -hmm. they come back. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so if I'm marking on a real quilt, if I'm just practicing, I use a friction pen. But if I'm working on a real quilt, I use the blue water soluble marker. Yep. Now, what That's that what means to... is that it doesn't disappear until the quilt <laughs> is totally soaked in water. Yep. Not just spritzed and sprayed. It has to be soaked. Do not mix the two uh, markers because if you press on when you have the water soluble one, it now becomes permanent. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. Don't want so, that. Yeah, I will do that or yeah. I'll just do a chalk because usually it's just right. kind of a kind of a line. Kind of a guideline. Yeah. Those chalk pencils that are coming out um, are really nice. The ceramic chalk ones are harder to remove. Mm -hmm. The pounce pad is really nice um, if you want to mark a grid. So, yeah, the looser chalk pencils are really wonderful because like. they the do. Rollers. Yeah. Right, the little rollers, yeah. yes, those are marvelous. <laughs> and they're yeah. fast. <laughs> yes. I'm all about fast. <laughs> <And I'll think laughs> if I don't have to yes. mark it, I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I don't mark a lot of my quilts. I'll have no. an idea of where I'm going. But yeah. that point that you said about having, you know, guidelines or, you know, seams to, that's what I usually, whenever I do free motion, I try to find, like, your points that exactly. you can just focus on and... Even though the curve is going to be different on each one, hey, 
Exactly. It's done. And, it's and worth let, it. <laughs> let me accent, let me add one thing to that, Gudrun. Things don't have to be exactly perfect. These are quilts that if you've made it for somebody as a gift, they're going to love it. They're not going to examine it and, and say, oh, but mom, you, you have a big stitch here and a little stitch there. And yeah. that line's not exactly the same as that line. Most people, when you make a quilt and give it to them, they love it. And your purpose of giving it to them is for them to enjoy it and wash it and dry it and use Absolutely. it again. Perfection is way overrated. Let it go. Enjoy the process and enjoy yeah. the quilt. Like I always yes. say, it's our hobby. It should be fun first and foremost. Enjoyable. So enjoy the process. And look right. at everything as practice. I mean, you free motion to quilt. Give yourself a round of applause, first of all, because you did it. <laughs> and That's then right. second, you just spent a few hours practicing something that you probably wouldn't have. And so your next Right. Time, so look at that. So, yeah. so talk about it being imperfect, right? Yeah. Accidents happen. And I made a major blunder on my quilt Saturday. But nobody can tell. No. Right? Oh. So unless you start pointing I, it out, <laughs> I squared Which, up. I'm going to tell you what I did. I squared up once I made those 24 blocks before I trimmed before I cut them diagonally. I them trimmed up. them up. I was on the phone with my son and his wife with an issue, and I'm just trying to continue on. So I squared these up to 12 and a half, and then I cut them. Yeah. So I have a much smaller quilt than you guys. <laughs> But you know what? We just that's went for right. it. It's that's a quilt. Right. It's done. It's done. We are going to enjoy this. Nobody, and except, and this is what we have to stop doing as quilters. When we meet with our friends that are also quilt, we like to start pointing out, oh, you know what I did wrong? See what I did? We need to stop that. It's like, oh, this it's, is it's beautiful thank you. free motion. Oh, but here I did, I did the wrong thing. I'm like, nope. I, I get on to everybody in class when I talk about that. Yeah. The word is... Thank you. Mm -hmm. exactly. And you shut your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was such a pleasure hanging out with you, Nina. Uh, we will have to do this again for sure. I enjoyed so, it. Like, I think everybody, wouldn't it be cool to have her come back on in a few weeks when, when she gets her quilts do quilt done? <laughs> you see what she ended up doing? I think that would be fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nina. And um, hugs, virtual hugs. Yes. Good to see you. Love you, girl. And Alrighty. we got your website up if everybody wants to check you out. Are you doing some classes, virtual classes? Um, I or am in teaching in Houston this year. <gasps> oh, yay. Good. I, I have six classes and a lecture and a forum with the free motion quilting. Perfect. Yeah. Well, if you're going I'll to Houston, busy. go check her out. Yes. Maybe I'll on, catch you. Me. I'll be there in like early. Are you vending? End of or market. Teaching? No, we won't be vending, but I'll be there for quilt market, so there might be okay. a little bit of overlap. I'll check and see. I'll come see you because I'll yeah. be teaching from Tuesday on. Right. Yeah. All right. Bye, All right. Nina. See you bye. later. Thank you, Gudrun. That was so awesome. I'm sure it's a, a little bit of an overload with all the information, but you know what? Soak it in. Watch the show again. That's what's beautiful about our show. You can always go back and watch it again and again and again. And if this doesn't give you ideas, I don't know what will. But that was great. It was awesome. But I got some stuff to show you. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about before I do that? Oh, I wanted to tell you something. So before we start, um, before I start showing you all the new fabric, I wanted to mention about the June... Uh, label. I, I designed a quilt label for the June quilt. If you wanted to purchase it, I have them having it printed on fabric. It's, it's um, stated as a pre-order. It's in production, so it will take a few weeks to get it, but then we will just send them out as soon as we get them. Now, I wanted to offer something to the internationals, or if you didn't want to um, wait for it, there is on the blog now a link to the PDF. So if you have the opportunity or the capacity to print onto paper, you're onto fabric yourself, you can do so. So you just have to, there's a little image that shows the label, click on it, it pulls up the big PDF and you can print it. So that's on the, on the blog already. So check that out. And then I also wanted to mention before we talk about the new fabric in the store, um, you know, it's, it's really an awesome feature on our website, the search feature. 
And I think it's so underused because we tend to always, if we see a quilt, we tend to ask like, what is that book in and what is the, where do I find this pattern? So the search feature will pull up a bunch of things. So if you put a name of a quilt, like even if it's in a book, if you put a name of a quilt like Sammy, um, in the search, what comes up in the search, you will first of all get the book that it's in and then anything that, any blog posts we've done about or anything like that will also come up or videos even. Um, and then the other thing, if you have fabric, let's say you have a one yard of fabric and you have, you know, you wondered what, what you could pair with it, you can just type the name of the fabric. And I did that just to show you guys today. So I put in the search, um, search box on the website, I just put canvas Bermuda. So the canvas fabric in the Bermuda color. And so check out what came up. There's all of these blog posts with pairings where I use that canvas Bermuda. So it's just a great way to kind of look and see um, what was paired with that and what, what kind of colorways you can kind of co come up with on your own. So just something I wanted to point out because I think it's really underused. So whenever you put something in the search bar, it will pull up both our products and our blogs. So love that. All right. So I wanted to mention one thing first before we dive into the bundles. We got some new one yards in. This is a line of basics that we had and has mostly been sold out. We got them some back. Um, this is the Country Confetti by Poppy Cotton. We got four colors. This one was very popular. This was a very tiny pin dot. Very cute and would work in so many ways. Um, so they're all very small dot with a little bit of color in them but they read as solids or as tone on tones, but they have a really nice movement to them. So we got those back in those colors and hopefully we'll be getting more colors as well. But I'm gonna start with a, um, again, we're getting lots of holiday seasonal fabrics in and we have a favorite in here. I don't know if we talked about the quilts behind me. The one straight behind me is a tailor quilt that we made from the regions beyond, the Tim Holtz, Halloween line. I absolutely love it. We'll be photographing, photographing it in whole, so you'll be able to see photos of it um, later on. Um, and then in the corner, we did a Clarissa quilt out of this bundle that I'm about to show you. So it's called of Winter Frost. Winter Frost. It's by Figo Fabrics, and um, you guys know that I love anything unique. So very wintry. I love anything with houses. So this is kind of one of the main prints. So it's like houses in, a in town. And um, then it has the people in town, which I love. So I did, for our quilt, I kind of focused on putting those guys in the center. We have the town scene here uh, with all the different buildings and mountains, um, beautiful branches. We got some stars. We have some gingerbread people and houses. Um, and then, so I love this colorway too. Very earthy. We have great um, tonals in here. There's a little bit of that light gingerbread color. Um, and then the beautiful grays and hues of light gray and medium gray into the darker gray. So I love the hue difference. And then we have a couple of darker ones, the dark one with the gray stars, and then the branches on the black background. So what I did for the quilt, if you check it out in the corner, I did a, I left out the darkest two colors. So can you show the one behind me? If I lean over. I left the two dark colors out. And then for Clarissa, since you need an accent fabric, I chose one of the um, greens that I've paired up with this line to kind of go with, it's the spectrostatic deep sea to go with all of the greens in here from the greenery. Um, I wanted to stand out, so I chose it's a little bit teal, but if you wanted a, a more subtle one, this one would work well to the Jack's fur. It would be kind of more subtle, if, um, not standing out so much. So these would be great accents or like a focus color. So there are my blocks on the design well before I sewed it together, if you wanted to see the overall look of the quilt. Um, and then I paired with it, if you wanted to add more lights, I loved these prints with it because it had that brown in them. It's this um, 
soften the volume flying seeds and the wild stems. They are perfect with it with a little bit of movement. Now some more grays. I did any all the tones of gray. Um, the perfect day splatter, splatter gray. It's great because it has the lights and the darks and a perfect shade. Spotted steel, kind of like that medium. And then the darkest, the thatched pebble, goes into the little bit of a darker grays. Some more of the taupey browns. I did the darkest one is the grunge maven taupe. And then I did a little bit more creamier, the prisms and the sandstone, and then the prisma albite latte color. So a little bit more yellow in there. And then we added, I added three blacks because we only have the two dark ones. I love this with it, the Deco Stitch Stellar, because it has the gray in here, so it ties in beautifully. The Spectrostatic Black, also with the white specks. And then the Moonscape Ebony, because it has a little bit of a direction. And if you wanted a stripe to go with it, this one came in perfectly. The Diagonal Stripe um, Ivory, it has a little bit of that taupe in here and the gray and the black. So this is Winter Frost Bundle. And we've taken photos and added this to our color pull blog with these prints. Um, and so getting into the wintry fabrics, still got a lot coming. And this next one is actually Halloween. But it's a different Halloween. So this is Art Gallery, their second version of this line. It's called Spooky and Sweeter. Last year they did a line called Spooky and Sweet. So not your typical black and orange coloring. Um, because Halloween can also be pink. So check this out. This is so adorable. So this is the main print. Yes, we've got pink pumpkins. So for the pink lover, I think this is totally awesome. And then there's a little bit of orange in there, of course, has to be a little bit of orange. We have beautiful prints and we have purple or lavender bats on a pink background. We have uh, skeletons on a pink background. And I love the shading going into the darker. We have ghosts on a hot pink background. This is just so adorable. Then we have a, just a little bit of lavender. This um, directional print here. We have the bats, black bats on uh, almost a purple. And we have pink pumpkins, pink um, jack-o'-lanterns. Love this. And I love this background too. It's not pure black. It has a, a lot of charcoal in it. We have spiders that are pink and orange and purple. Love this. And we have all the witches, shoes, and hats, and brooms, and even a black cat in there. Um, two more prints. We have this kind of tone on tone in the, with the orange. And then one kind of a fall foliage one with some flowers and a little bit of spider web in there, tying the dark and the purple and the orange together. So this is spooky and sweeter. How cute, right? Um, so to go with that, I started in the corner with my darks. I love this, the speckled metallic black because it has all the different hues in here, those golden hues that have on this print. And then I did a spotted charcoal because it's not pure black here. If you wanted a plaid, this plaid buffalo with a black and gray works very well. And then, of course, I added some more pinks. Actually, let's start with a lavender, because this was like a perfect lavender to go with it. The Dash Flow Pansy. And then um, we did some pinks. I wanted to go kind of a brighter pink to add to it. So the Prisma Red Rod Rodon Rodonite. Oh, my gosh, how do you pronounce this thing? <laughs> Dash Flow Raspberry, a little bit lighter into the Bumbleberry's Pink Burst. So we're going into the light accents on here. Jack's Berry. And then I got two really light ones. So I light lavender, deco stitch, lilac dusk. And then the pink powder uh, for the lightest pink. And obviously, 
If you wanted a stripe, you can use the same one I pulled in the previous one. Double, double whammy here. The diagonal stripe ivory will work for both bundles. Spooky and sweeter. How cute is that? So if you have kids or grandkids or anybody that just loves pink, I'm sure that Halloween, in their eyes, there's nothing wrong with having a pink Halloween. Right? Nothing wrong with having any color you want. So love that they are very accommodating. All right, the next one up, um, we're going to go into Christmas. Joyful Tidings. A really whimsical, beautiful um, artwork on this. And it's a 12 piece bundle. And so we have both snowmen. Um, really cute. I love the colorway. Lots of grays, really cool red, and some beautiful greens. So we have all the collage of snowmen with their scarves. And we have the mittens. Really cute print with a green and red mittens. We have the deer or the reindeer um, that have actually Christmas ornaments hanging from their antlers and the trees. We have a really nice holly berry print and I love this one. The red stockings hanging from the evergreen branch. So pretty. And then um, we go into a little bit of red with a snowman. You know, the gray snowman, this is kind of how they look usually in Iceland because <laughs> they always have kind of that dirty snow. Um, and then we have, I love this print. This looks like the skates I used to have when I was a kid. Now, we used to skate on the street because it was covered in ice. So we would just skate on the street. Didn't have to go far. Just walk out the door. Love this print too, the lantern on this really nice gray background. And then we go into the greens. This awesome sleigh. Oh, love this with this presents inside. And we got evergreens with snowy evergreens. And then the pine cones and the branches here. So beautiful line. Just love the colors and the feel of it. This would make such pretty table toppers, runners, and um, anything for the holidays. But matching this was fun. Um, I started with the greens, of course, the canvas pine needle, the darkest green, going into the grunge holly with a little bit lighter but dark tones. And then the spectrostatic spearmint has the dark specks in it, but a really nice hue of green. And then we have um, some of the reds. It's a little bit of a pinkish red, so the Moonscape Flame was perfect, as well as Jack's Tiger Lily. It's a really nice hue if you wanted a stripe, the diagonal stripe. The Be Mine is great because it has that feel of the pinkish red. If you wanted more of the grays, this stripe is great, the diagonal stripe on the go. And then we went with a hue of... Um, gray. So I started kind of with the darkest that works with this color. So the grunge lead is a perfect match here into a little bit lighter. The dimples cool gray could resonate with this one and into some of the lighter ones. And so would the jot dot charcoal with the darker tones tying in here and the lighter tones with the lighter colors. And then I have three light grays, the same perfect day splatter because it has the dark specks as well. The jot dot fog, and then I love this print with it, the seedlings, the Norma Rose seedlings, because it has the gray uh, branches. This would make a beautiful, calm background for all of this. If you needed a background for a table runner or any or a quilt, this would just be perfect with it because it ties that gray into it. So love this line. Uh, just really happy and joyful and jolly and unique, really unique. Joyful tidings. Are you, are you getting into the holiday mood? <laughs> I think that's a little early to get into the holiday mood, right? We don't want you to get there quite yet, but, you know, get into the feel of at least collecting the fabrics to get ready for some holiday sewing. 
because we're going to do a lot of fun holiday sewing this year. promise you that. All right, so the next and last but not least, we have uh, a line that came in that's been on pre-order for us. This is Halloween, but a very retro Halloween. It's called Kitty Corn by Moda, and this is just adorable. It's so cute. The colors are all very light and soft, but really pretty. So I wanted to start with the greens. So of course, this is kind of the key print, the kitty corn, uh, the kitty with the pumpkin. And we have a very retro 60s type of a main, um, all over kind of main print floral with a little bit of a, a spider in there. We have, of course, candy corn small scale candy corn and a beautiful dot we have an awesome plaid in the green light green and then going into the really nice it's almost like a peach color not really orange like a peachy melony color candy corn we have the polka dot and we have the kitties also on the black dotted polka dot background you are a polka dot lover, this one is for you. We've got the florals in the 60s print and the candy corn. And then of course the plaid on the dark, which we also have in one yard. So if you want it more for a border or binding or anything, we got this one in one yard. So I just love it, I love the colorway of it. So we have more of that. Playing with this, I started with blacks. So if you wanted to pure black to really stand out, the century blacks, black on black would work great. Um, I, however, love this, the Life's Recipes texture and the chalkboard, because it has those, a little bit of brownish peach colored specks on it. The Jot Dot Black has the lighter tones of the black in with it, like the grays. So then we go into the more peachy colored oranges. This is actually a new color for um, na the nature elements, orange peel. I love it with the lights and the darks. We have a canvas melon. And then this plaid would work perfectly too. The diagonal plaid from um, Pumpkins and Blossoms from Fig Tree. Some of the greens. I did the Moonscape Lagoon. And then our new... Um, country confetti, the mint sea glass would work perfectly because it has those dark specks that tie in with the darks. And then I decided I wanted to pull a background because these are all color. If you wanted a background, for example, if you wanted to do a June, you have your lights and your darks, and then you can just pull in a background. And actually the pumpkins and blossoms that we have in one yards work perfectly, has that light peachy tone with it. Um, if you wanted more print or if you wanted, um, sorry, this one, which is a tone on tone, pumpkins and blossoms vanilla, this is the pebble. And then we have spotted ivory. I feel like an ivory color works very well with it. If you want it a little sharper, the country confetti and the white cupcake, even though these specks are pink, once you put it with these colors, it will take on that color because they're just a pin dot. So I love this combination. Very pretty retro. Halloween. Isn't it cute? So cute. All right, let's move on. I know it's getting late. It was a great show, a long show. I apologize for that, but I think everybody will be all right with all of those great quilting ideas. So let's put up our live winner. You got, got your winner pulled, Mr. HP? Oh, there she is. It's a she, Katie Neal. Congratulations, Katie. Thank you for being with us. If you want a $25 gift card, send us an email at help at geequaldesigns.com and we'll get you that gift card right away. Now, uh, of course, there's another chance to win. So answer, by answering this question, simple one, it gets you entered into the drawing, which we'll announce next week during um, Tipsy Tuesday. And the question is, Will you quilt June yourself? Attempt it on your long arm, possibly, or your domestic machine. I'd love to hear it. Uh, like I said, winner will be announced next Tuesday. For our Tipsy Tuesday show, will be 
July 6th, after the holiday weekend here in the U.S., 7 p.m. Central, July 6th. Our next show will, however, be this coming Friday before the holiday weekend, July 2nd at 3 p.m. Central. And I promised you that there will be a recipe for my lemon rhubarb le or rhubarb lemon drop. So if you wanted to try that, you just have to make rhubarb syrup. And that's how a, gr a great easy way to make it also non-alcoholic. So how to make rhubarb syrup. So simple syrup are, are used in cocktails all the time. Usually it's done with one cup sugar and one cup water. You just boil or heat it until the sugar melts. But if you wanted to do any kind of flavor, you can throw all kinds of aromatics or fruit or anything in there. So uh, how I make it, like a pound of rhubarb or so, chop it. And then I put actually two cups of water versus one cup of sugar because there are sugars in the rhubarb you just you know heat it up until the sugar is all melted and the rhubarb is soft and then you just strain it with a fine mesh strainer very easy very very easy and beautiful and tasty so that is it for us tonight anything to add did i miss anything it was a lot a lot thank you nina thank you nina for joining us um i know you all appreciated it she's still there Great to see you. All right, that is it. I will see you uh, this coming Friday, hopefully, at 3 p.m. Central. Bye, everybody.